Good to Great, Why Some Companies Make the Leap and Others Don't, by Jim Collins. What pushes a good company to the great level? That is the question Jim Collins and his research team wanted to answer. They analyzed data covering 40 years from over 1,400 good companies. In that time, some of those companies jumped to being great. Wouldn't this be a secret to discover, valuable for investors, experienced business leaders, and startup entrepreneurs? Collins judged good to great by comparing their stock returns against their market average. To be considered great, they had to generate three times the average of the general market over 15 years without counting industry jumps. When he found the great companies, he and his team scoured all the reports and data they could find. Collins concludes that there is no one prescription for producing large-scale corporate change. In fact, he deems lots of change programs as mere myths. The companies he found making the jump had, in his words, no miracle moment. They couldn't identify a program they followed or any specific instant that things changed. What it boiled down to was a down-to-earth, pragmatic, committed-to-excellence process. So Collins wrote this book to give you some of the commonalities in that committed-to-excellence process, what he deems the flywheel effect. Think of the effort it takes to get a giant flywheel moving. Push after push after strenuous push. Ultimately, after lots of hard work, it gets going, and its momentum works to your advantage. That is the process he observed most in his data analysis. Here are some of the other commonalities that were part of getting that flywheel turning. Disciplined people. Focus on the who before the what, or even the where. Collins asks you to picture the leader of the company as a bus driver. Bus drivers need to decide where they are going and who is going with them. But Collins suggests that the bus driver must get the correct riders first, and together they work on the direction. In 1981, Fannie Mae was losing ground. One million dollars a day. David Maxwell took over, and before assessing a new direction for the company, he dealt with current employees, asking for only A-level employees who were willing to put out A-level effort. 14 of 26 top executives got off the bus, and he hired people who met the criteria to replace them. The new team worked together to chart the new course. Then the team applied incredible effort to get the flywheel going. They turned things around, and Fannie Mae earned a great status by Collins' standards, generating eight times more stock returns from 1984 to 1999 than the general market. Why is who you hire such an essential first step? First of all, you need your employees to be able to adapt and not be married to a direction they thought the company was going. Businesses need to be flexible, and the employees need to be able and willing to adapt to change. Also, when you hire first and include your employees in vision and direction planning, They are self-motivated because of their ownership. Lastly, if you settle for less than great employees, you can only expect less than great results. Before we get to the second commonality, please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to our channel. Your support means everything to us. All right, back to the next commonality. Disciplined thought. Collins suggests you think more like a hedgehog than a fox. Foxes have lots of little ideas, and they may try one after another in rapid succession. Hedgehogs, on the other hand, have one big idea. Whatever challenges them, they curl into a ball with their prickles out, and it works. Fox tries all his different schemes, but Hedgehog sticks with the one that works. As a business, search for that hedgehog concept. The process of settling on what concepts require starting with the brutal facts of the company's condition. The management climate needs to be honest, direct, and analytical. Personal biases need to be set aside. Collins uses the phrase, autopsies without blame, to describe the depth of examination. The idea is to distill all you know into one overall simple yet profound concept that can take on the current conditions and thrive. Collins presents three intersecting circles. Within their convergence lies the hedgehog concept. Each circle represents a question. 1. In what area can we be the very best? Often this question is aided by the converse, in what areas do we least succeed? 2. What will work best for us economically? 3. For what area do we have the most passion? Do not expect to happen upon the hedgehog concept after a weekend retreat. Good to great companies found it took four years of questioning, studying, debating, and revisiting the three circles. Disciplined Action Operating from the hedgehog concept takes a strong will. That strong will is particularly evident when it comes to deciding on what actions of the company need to be curtailed, stopped. 
It doesn't matter whose baby it was, it doesn't matter who is running it now, and it doesn't matter if outsiders don't think it is a smart idea. Don't just have a to-do list. Seriously consider your stop-doing list. Kimberly Clark is a clear example of a stop-doing-this list that ended up paying off. Darwin Smith and his management team decided that something needed to change to go from good to great. They were a good company and shared that title with other good companies. In an unexpected and unprecedented move, the team left its 100-year history as a successful paper mill company and decided to enter the paper-based consumer market. They would face such notable companies as Scott Paper Company and Procter & Gamble. While the move was decried as short-sighted and downright stupid by many, the team pushed and pushed the flywheel. 25 years later, Kimberly Clark had absorbed Scott's Paper Company and topped the list of paper-based consumer products companies. They made Collins' good-to-great list. Can Collins' ideas be used by those who are not CEOs of big companies? Absolutely. Collins himself suggested investors who are willing to do some research can gain valuable insights about companies that might be making a move from good to great. But beyond that, whether you are a startup entrepreneur or a business leader within a larger company, you can use his tactics to experience positive gains within your sphere of influence. The keys are to gather the forces within your sphere of influence, even if you are just driving a minibus. With these people, honestly and critically assess your situation. Work towards a hedgehog concept and then give it all you've got to get the flywheel going.